What's up, crew? Today I want to talk to you about how to spot your diabetes blind spots and how to make sure you catch it before it happens, right? Because sometimes those blind spots with diabetes can be life threatening. And I got a story for you as I encountered something last night that uh, may change your perspective on how you manage your diabetes. So without any further ado, let's get into our theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. All right, so I actually had an entirely different podcast episode planned for this. As of you who might know, I went to a mastermind in Tennessee a few weeks ago and was going to share some insights, you know, from that conference, and it was just a fantastic experience. But last night, I experienced something not so fantastic, and uh, it was both terrifying and extremely painful. <laughs> so last night, let me get into it. Last night, uh, my insulin pump beeped at me at 3.32 in the morning. I'll tell you exactly why I knew what time it was later on, but it beeped at me. You know, first glance is, is it blood sugar related or is it just a notification kind of thing? It was a notification kind of thing. So I was like, all right, don't worry about it, right? But now that I'm up, I have to go to the bathroom. And so I was like, all right, I'm gonna get up walk to the bathroom, I make my way across this pitch black room, you know, I've done it a thousand times before, as I'm making my way to the door, making sure I don't wake up the baby, right, all of a sudden, I smack my foot on a suitcase, painful as heck, and I trip into the suitcase, it's a large checked baggage, I fall into the suitcase, <laughs> onto the floor, trying not to make too much noise, because the baby's gonna wake up, but I'm holding in a scream of pain, just like, oh, don't move, oh, what the heck happened, what is this, and I'm tired, I'm foggy, right, so I'm trying to figure out what happened, how am I in a suitcase right now, and why is my foot and my shin thriving, and thriving, throbbing in pain, and uh, I get up, I kind of stumble over the door, I open it up, I close it, I'm like limping across the living room, like, what the heck just happened? And I get to the bathroom, turn the light on, I go to the bathroom, and uh, I was like, I should probably check on that. That was really painful. I look down, and my legs got this scrape. It's it's not bleeding bad, but it, it's got a little bit of blood. And I'm like, okay, it's the shin. It is the most painful part. I guess that's it. I look down further, and I've got not one, but two toes that are bleeding and dripping blood. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on right now? Uh, so not only did I trip and fall into a suitcase in a pitch black room, but I stubbed both of my toes and scraped my shin on the way down. And uh, my toenail is cracked, my big toe, and I won't show you any pictures or anything, don't worry. But uh, long story short, I was quite surprised in a not so fun manner where I actually was injured as I got up to go to the bathroom at night. And as I said, this is a walk I've done thousands of times before, right? I get up every once in a while, every couple of nights, you have the bathroom break in the middle of the night. And, uh, you know, I glanced at the clock because, well, I wanted to see what time it was. So I had to ice my foot, right? Grab some frozen fruit out of the freezer, laid down on the floor, tired as heck, right? This is like the one night that I had a chance to get some good sleep finally. And unfortunately, I had to stay up to ice my toe because I was thinking, you know what, I got to at least hit the pause button on this inflammation because my toenail is going to start throbbing. And if, for anybody who's ever split a toenail before, you know, it's, it's not fun. Proceeded to get a sock to put over my toes because you know, the, the nail was going to cut up the sheets or something probably. I don't know, but it's what I thought in my, my tired, groggy state. Like this is the next step is ice it and then put a sock on and go back to bed so that blood doesn't get everywhere. And uh, it was... A frustrating experience to say the least uh, i'm fine now i can walk and it's it's not the end of the world but it made me think of something like i've made that journey to the bathroom before and that suitcase was not there before right so i didn't expect it and then i didn't know what to expect other than a clear path to the door because i've done that tons of times before and as i'm thinking through this it starts to sound familiar as i'm rehearsing in my head i've done this a hundred times before why is it different this time and i'm like wait a second, 
diabetes, right? Like we've eaten the same food day after day after day. And yet sometimes there's those different experiences where you were not prepared for it. And either you go stupid low and it's a very difficult situation or you spike and go into a frustrating and stubborn high blood sugar that just makes you feel sick to your stomach, right? And as we're looking at diabetes in general, realize that there are these, these hidden obstacles or these uh, these challenges that we might encounter, these pitfalls or cliffs to watch out for, right? And as you go through your life with diabetes, you will inevitably encounter these obstacles, that diabetes bump in the night kind of thing, right? Where you realize that was something that you wish you had seen because it was a painful or scary experience. And for me personally, I can remember back to a time when uh, I used to think that insulin was just something you take to match food or blood sugars. You just go for it. And there's no thought that goes into it, right? Wrong. <laughs> Very wrong. That's a lesson that I had to learn, right? Uh, I would take a correction for a blood sugar, you know, some insulin. And what, 20, 30 minutes later, nothing's happening. So what do I do? I would give another one. 20 minutes later, gosh, dang it, nothing's happened. Guess I'll give another one. Well, what was my crucial mistake in that moment? Not knowing or not being aware of that diabetes bump in the night kind of obstacle where if you stack insulin, it can be extremely dangerous, right? And for me, I didn't understand the timelines of insulin and that it takes time for the insulin to start working. And that's why we take a pre-bolus. That's why you don't stack insulin when you give corrections. But for me, that was a scary experience, recognizing that, oh, wait a second, if I take too much insulin or if I stack insulin on top of insulin, it can lead into a scary drop and even a significant low later on. But until you experience that or until you learn that, you're not going to know that, right? Especially if you've given insulin before and it's worked. But the scenarios are different. And so for last night, you know, I, I ran into a suitcase on the floor. Why the heck did that happen? Well, we're gearing up for our big move. And if you missed last week's episode, we bought a house. It's our first house ever. It's, it's going to be our home. And we're stoked about it. But yesterday, I started the moving process. I started packing things up. And it, as funny as this is, I wanted to blame somebody else. But I put that suitcase there. That's the worst part. That's the the crux of the story where it's like, really, I put it there and I forgot about it, but I put the suitcase there because we were moving, but it's outside of my norm, you know, and with diabetes, you're not going to have the same day lived every single day. It's going to be different food, different activities, different stress levels, different sleep, different hydration, different moods. Like you, you get the picture, right? It's going to be a different day. And if you don't know what to look out for, you're going to get caught into a scary situation. It's the last thing that I want for you, right? I've, I've certainly had those scary experiences before where, like I said, I stacked insulin, didn't realize it was something that I shouldn't do and that I should have calculated before because no one told me that. You know, I wasn't told uh, that exercise is going to impact blood sugars. I wasn't told that sleep or hydration would. I wasn't told that insulin sensitivity can change not only over the course of your life, but even on a day-to-day -day basis. What? There are so many things that we don't know. And unfortunately, you don't know what you don't know. In fact, that's one of the things that I hear often on the consultation calls that I do with other type one diabetics, right? And they get on and we're chatting about the plan and what they've tried so far and what's their goal and, and realizing at some point in that call, they're like, huh, I guess I just was never taught those things. And I didn't know that I didn't know those things. Just like I didn't know that there was a suitcase on the floor <laughs> because it was pitch black. And with diabetes, it's like you're trying to navigate a pitch black room, trying to get to the door, trying to stay quiet so you don't wake the baby, right? Make the blood sugars go crazy. But having understanding of how blood sugars cooperate or don't, how insulin works, what does activity do? It's like giving you a flashlight. And as you got the flashlight that's spotted at your feet, you can make that light bigger with more understanding. Right. And we'll just say that because it's a flashlight, it's a spotlight, it's on the floor, so it's not going to wake the baby. Right. You're good there. But understanding that the more you understand, the greater chances you have of avoiding those pitfalls and challenges and bumps in the night from your diabetes. Right. But here's the tricky part. This quote that I love to to share with my clients is that nothing changes when nothing changes. 
right? If I don't go move that suitcase today, which I plan on doing now that I'm talking about it actually, <laughs> but if I don't move that suitcase, the same exact thing could happen tonight. I could go right back into the same situation, wake up to go to the bathroom and then pff, bump my foot, hurt myself again. Maybe this time it's the other foot. Now I've got two toes or two feet with bleeding toes. If you don't change what's not working, it's gonna continue not working. Right? Definition of insanity is continuing to try to do the same thing, expecting a different result. It's not going to work if you don't change things up. If you don't understand your diabetes entirely, if you don't have 100% confidence in the amount of insulin you're giving, when you're giving it, the strategies that you've implemented, then something might be missing and you might be headed towards that diabetes bump in the night. Now, the issue with diabetes is that, you know, my experience last night, bloody toe. It's not the end of the world, right? A diabetes experience with a bump in the night could land you in the hospital. A very different, very scary situation that could potentially be in your future if you don't understand and have certainty in why blood sugars do what they do. You gotta be aware of your blind spots. And in order to do that, there is some effort that goes into play, right? Like I, I have to go put effort into moving the suitcase. I also had to put effort into learning about my diabetes. And I'll be honest with you, it took me years of trial and error, research, documentation, of obsessing over this thing. It's not fun. I'm gonna be real upfront with you. It's not a fun process, but it can be expedited if you find the right guide, right? If you find someone who knows what they're doing and they offer to help you, take it, right? It doesn't matter who it is, just make sure that they're living the life that you want to live. If you are not vegan and you say, I will never be vegan, then don't go learn from somebody who's going to tell you to be vegan, right? Same thing can be said about carnivore or low carbs. You're like, Matt, I love carbs. My whole family is Italian. Great. My wife's family is Italian too. Here's how to eat carbs safely, right? And still have those good blood sugars. You got to find someone to teach you or you will have to put the work in by yourself, which like I said, for me took years. It's not fun, but I will tell you it is worth it. Because now that I am aware of what to expect, there's a lot less of those bumps in the night with my diabetes, right? I still have the occasional actual bump in the night. <laughs> but when you learn what to expect, you can expect better results. And I want to leave you with that. So if you're looking for that spotlight to grow, to have a deeper understanding of your blood sugars, to identify what those potential pitfalls, dangers, and challenges are before you have to stub your toe and have those diabetes experiences that you learn from. If you want to learn from somebody else's experiences, just learn from mine. There's a free training where I go over the in-depth identifiers of blood sugar fluctuations, right? Looking at why do blood sugars go up and down? I mentioned the insulin stacking, right? I didn't know initially that you shouldn't give multiple doses because nobody told me that. I had to learn the hard way. So instead of you learning the hard way, I want to give you an opportunity to shortcut that process. And that's why this training exists. It goes over a few key components, you know, diet, exercise, insulin. How do these things impact blood sugars? What can you expect so that you can navigate that dark room with a flashlight instead of stubbing your toe, right? And dealing with those scary situations yourself. But you got to put the work in. You can't just learn it and expect it to be better. You have to watch the training and actually implement on what you learn. And of course, I go over this incredible topic called the 80-20 blood sugar formula. This is the method that I discovered over those years of obsessing over blood sugars. I bumped my toe. I, you know, bloodied my shin. I did all of those things with my diabetes through trial and error so that I could learn. And through that process, I mapped it all out, kept really detailed notes, and simplified the process through that 80-20 blood sugar formula. That is how I literally can predict where my blood sugars are going to go, which allows me to what? Keep them more stable. If that's something that you're ready for, that you're interested in, what are you doing? Go check out the free training. <laughs> all right. That's something I talk about all the time because it can and likely will change your life. I want to help you avoid those diabetes bumps in the night. All right. So you can go check out that training. It's absolutely free at diabetesinaction.com. I was talking about those consultation calls where I chat with people and they tell me, uh, you know, they don't know what they don't know. And we create a plan for them. There's an opportunity to do that if it would serve you well at the end of that video. But the video itself, definitely start there. Grab that free training, grab a note or a notepad and pen, take notes, implement avoid those diabetes bumps in the nights because I've experienced them. They are not fun. And I want you to learn from my mistakes 
and not have to make your own. All right. So head over to diabetesinaction.com. Let's avoid those diabetes bumps in the night. I'll catch you guys next week. Have an amazing rest of your day. Don't forget to subscribe wherever that button is. Hit it down below and keep up the fight.